Another opportunity to take two points against a team the Sabres are chasing. Got some numbers on Lukanen as well that are going to be stellar for you coming up here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. Your Locked On Sabres, your daily podcast on the Buffalo Sabres. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thanks for making Locked On Sabres your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. One of those places you can find the show is on YouTube. Be sure to check us out there. If you want to watch the show, just type in Locked On Sabres. You can find us right there. Sneaky Joe DiBiase on a game day. Sabres and Islanders, 7 o'clock puck drop Thursday night at Key Bank Center. We'll get to some of the preview of tonight's game, including the goalie matchup, the line combinations for both teams. I've got some intel, if you will, on the Islanders that kind of implies that they are not the same old Islanders that you might expect, and they might give you a little bit more of an offensive game in this one. A lot to get to. The playoff odds for this game as well are coming up on today's show. If you want to check us out on our Locked On Sabres text line where you can get some updates there, a lot of conversation throughout the games themselves, back and forth. I like to read some texts on the show as well. If you're not a texter already, to sign up, you go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Sabres. If you sign up there, Everything from there is on your phone through texting. You don't have to go to the browser after that. Sabres and Islanders, 7 o'clock puck drop. We'll get to the game. It is very meaningful in the standings. The Sabres, with a win, can climb to within three points of the Islanders. They would need a little bit of help on the out-of-town scoreboard to be able to say tomorrow morning that they are three points out of a playoff spot. But it is possible that we wake up tomorrow and they are three points out of a playoff spot. And playing the Red Wings on Saturday to be one point back. That'd be nice. Keep it going. This is the season, right? If they win, we keep the train rolling. If they lose, it's going to feel like the death knell. They can't lose a head-to-head game against a team they're chasing when they are coming from behind like they are. We'll get to more on the game in a little bit. Wanted to focus a little bit on the beginning of today's show on Uka Pekalukanen. A check-in on just how incredible his season has become. To the point where it's kind of been in stages, right? Start Stage one of the season was Levi and Comrie. The first seven games of the year, no Lukanen whatsoever. Was not a part of the rotation. He barely made the team as the number three goaltender. So that was stage one. Stage two. He begins to get into the rotation, starts to take the net over. And for a couple of weeks, it's, all right, he's becoming the 1B. We knew Devin Levi coming into the year was going to get a chance to run with the number one job. And who's going to be the next guy? It was Comrie versus Lukanen. And Lukanen took over Comrie pretty early on in the season and became that guy with Levi, kind of a 1A, 1B situation. Then. Levi gets hurt, Lukanen starts to take over, and then it became, this is phase three, he's the number one. You're running with the hot guy, all right, he is their number one goaltender. Stage four is he's a number one, not he's their number one, he is the, he is a number one. He's playing like a legitimate starting goaltender in the NHL, he's not just getting starts by default. After that, it was the stage five. He's got to play every game. He is their only goaltender. He's the only show in town. Send Levi to Rochester. Eliminate Comrie from the rotation. He was waived himself before that. This is Lukanen's net. Don't touch it. He's not just the number one. He is the only one. And I feel like we are now in stage six, if you will. Phase six. He is one of the best goalies in hockey. It's right to say it. Right now, this season, Uka Pekka is not just has not just taken over the job. 
He is not just a number one goaltender. He is not just a guy that is worthy of playing every night that isn't a back-to-back. He is legitimately one of the best goalies in hockey. And there's one number that shows that off in a big way. I've mentioned this stat before. It's not one that I bring up a lot because I do think there are some flaws to it if you're judging the overall of a player. But there is a stat out there called quality start percentage. A 900 save percentage or better in a start. What percentage of your starts do you have above a 90% save percentage? And for Lukanen, of all the goalies in the league that have played more than one game, I'm for for usually for these game minimums, it's around like 10 games, 15 games. You can usually set it yourself. I'm going to set it down at one game. Anyone that's had more than one start this year, the highest quality start percentage in the National Hockey League is Lukanen. So what does that really mean? It does not mean he's the best goalie in the NHL this year. That in a runaway is Connor Hellebuck. But what it does mean is Lukanen's the most consistent goaltender in hockey this year. He might not be the best, but he is the most consistent. He does not have bad games. And for that, there's no other goalie that you can say this more accurately about that Lukanen gives his team to cha- a chance to win every single night. That statement that you hear a lot about goalies is more true this year about Lukanen than any other goaltender in the NHL. The Sabres released a number this morning in their preview of the game, Sabres and Islanders, that Lukanen has given up three goals or fewer in 23 of his last 24 games. That's unbelievable. He's had one bad game, really, in that 24-game stretch. The Anaheim game from a couple of weeks ago, where he only faced something like 15 shots and let in four. He had a bad game that day, and that's it. For like a three-month stretch, this guy has been rock solid. He has been so impressive, so good. He really is earning a good, healthy contract, I think, with the Sabres. I'm still not... I don't think there's any point in a one-year sample that I would get to giving a goalie a seven-year extension. But on a three-year bridge deal or a two-year bridge deal, I think we're starting to have to think about a four and a half, five million dollar salary for Lukanen. I feel like he's starting to play his way into that. But we can worry about that later on after the season. For now, ride the ride and watch Lukanen carry them back into the race. If they were to somehow make it, their odds are very low, even still. If they were to somehow make it, this would be a weird year to do that because we're not happy with Tage's play. We're not happy with Cousins' play. We're not happy with Skinner's play. Not happy with Tuck's play compared to last season. Not happy with Power. Not happy with so many guys. There's not many that you are happy with. If they somehow made it, the whole year would be the season of UPL. Who would get the credit for getting them to the playoffs? It would be Lukanen. This guy willed a team that regressed on every level, except defensively. Uh, But remember, they were like a middle-of-the-road defensive team. They're not a great one. This team that regressed in so many ways made the playoffs, and you're going to absolutely credit that to just Lukanen if if they uh, somehow um, if they somehow get you know into it. So. Looking in, super impressive. When we come back, we'll get to Sabres and Islanders, the lineups for these games, uh, the ca- including some intel and an interview on Thursday morning at WGR with an Islanders guest that I want to pass along because th- it makes me think about the Islanders very differently than what their reputation is. That's coming back here on the Locked on Sabres podcast. Stay tuned for that. We are presented by Ibotta. Grocery bills are so expensive these days, but now they don't have to be. Start getting cash back on your grocery shopping with the free Ibotta app and get cash back every time you shop. Ibotta is a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to toys so you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. The average Ibotta user earns $256 per year. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip. So you can buy that flight 
you've been eyeing, that game you're dying to go to, or that fancy dinner that you've been craving. Other apps give you points that don't usually amount to much. With Ibotta, you add your offers in the app, upload your receipts, so you get real cash that you can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards too. Join the over 50 million users and earn cash back every time you shop from over 2,700 brands and retailers, including Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Right now, Ibotta offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code LOCKED.NHL when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store, download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back, and use code LOCKEDONNHL. That's Ibotta in the Google Play or App Store, and use code LOCKEDONNHL. Back here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. Thanks for making us your first listen. Your next listen, check out Locked On Sports today. You've got... Football, free agency, the NBA, the Players' Championship, but baseball is coming soon. As you know, Lockdown's launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel that is Lockdown Sports today. But baseball fans, mark your calendars March 20th, 7 p.m. Eastern time for the best MLB season preview coming exclusively to Locked On Sports today. Check them out, YouTube or the free Fire Amazon Fire TV channels app. Sabres and Islanders, 7 o'clock puck drop at Key Bank Center, and the Sabres are right down the middle as a pick them. So what are we going to get in this game? Well, let's start with the Islanders, the opponent, because they are a team that I've said repeatedly, and a lot of people have said repeatedly, and usually when I watch them, I thought I was getting the same sentiment, but obviously I'm going to trust the people to watch them every day. But in my head, the Islanders are what? What they've always been. Defensive, lock it down type of team, likes to play a low scoring game, tough, physical hockey team with not a lot of superstar offensive talent, really not much to speak of at all other than Matthew Barzell. But had Mike Carver on uh, WGR on Thursday morning, beat reporter for the New York Islanders. And what he said when I asked about their style was, oh, no, no, no. Under Patrick Wah, this team is playing more aggressive and more offensive than they have in years than certainly they ever did under Barry Trotz. And Waz got them playing a little looser, a little more up and down the ice, and he's really trying to get their offensive skilled players to breathe a little bit uh, from all the way from the neutral zone to the offensive zone. And that is starting to show up in the numbers. Matthew Barzell, who has always been a great player, is over a point per game. But the guy to look at for this is Noah Dobson. Noah Dobson, who might be a player that you are somewhat familiar with if you're a casual hockey fan, if you're a diehard, you know the type of season that this dude is having. He has been an offensive defenseman in the past, 49 points last year, 51 points the year before that. That was really the uh, the most the extent of it, but pretty good. Thir- 13 goals each of the last two years, decent puck mover, uh, 20 minutes a night. We're talking about like a, a top pair defenseman, but not an elite one. This season, he's a point per game player. 64 and 64 for Noah Dobson. His ice time has rocketed up to 25 minutes a night. And he is in the Norris conversation. He's probably not going to win it. But he is right now, I saw Greg Wyshynski ESPN did a straw poll of NHL executives for each NHL award. This is about a week ago, two weeks ago. And Noah Dobson came in second place for the Norris Trophy. He is... I mean, he's, it's not just offensive. Like, he is a great number one defenseman for the Islanders this season. There are no ways around it. And a big reason why his numbers are up are they're playing a little bit of a better style to fit his game. So Dobson, a player to watch out for today um, as someone that is making a big difference for that Islanders team. Barzell is dangerous. I still am not overall impressed by their their whole unit. If you look at their top six, I mean, who scares you? Bo Horvat with Brock Nelson and Matthew Barzell. Horvat's a nice player. Nelson, eh. Uh, Barzell is the only guy that really strikes any fear into me. Second line, Pajot, Paul Mary, and Anders Lee. Just, you know, it's the Islanders. I'm getting these middle-of-the-road forwards that, I, you know, they, they score once in a while, um, but I'm not intimidated by it. And Dobson is really the only guy on the blue line that I really respect is like a top three, top two guy. So, their great talents kind of, you know, dry up pretty quickly. 
Um, goalie is obviously where they have another elite talent. Ilya Sorokin is an unbelievable goaltender, and he will start, by the way, against Lukanen uh, tonight for the Islanders. Uh, when we come back, we'll get to the Sabres lineup, and I've got playoff odds for you. Not only what they are right now, but more so, how high do the Sabres playoff odds go if they win in regulation? How high if they win in overtime? And how far do they drop if they lose this hockey game? We'll tell you that when we come back here on the Locked On Savers podcast. We are presented by Robin Hood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robin Hood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robin Hood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robin Hood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap. On the 3% match, Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now some legal info. Claim as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. A Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Final segment here on the Locked on Sabres podcast, Sabres and Islanders. The Sabres are five back of the Islanders, um, which, of course, is uh, not great. You want to be a little bit closer. Uh, Sorokin in goal for the Islanders and Lukanen for the Sabres, two of the better goalies in the NHL this season. The Islanders also have two games in hand along with the five points, so a must-win for by any stretch of the imagination for this game. The Sabres playoff odds as they stand at moneypuck.com are 4.6%. Should the Sabres win this game? 3.6%, excuse me. Should they win? According to moneypuck.com, in regulation, the Sabres playoff odds go up to 5.9. So it's a big jump. You know, we're starting to maybe start to climb ourselves out of the single digits if they win this game. If the Sabres win in overtime, 4.5%. So it would only go up about one percentage point if they win an OT. If they lose in overtime, down to 2.4%. If they lose in regulation, 1.5%. They truly got to win this game. And just to get to the next one. Because if they beat the Red Wings on Saturday and the Red Wings lose, then we could be talking about them being somewhere in the te- high teens even maybe. I don't have that, that scientifically, just you know a guess, that they might be in the high teens for playoff percentage. But they got to get some things to go their way, and they got to win this game against the Islanders. And they really got to do it in regulation. Now, Ryan Miller Knight, team that they've had trouble against in the past, Ryan Miller Knight, and... Funny coincidence, maybe they did this, but when Ryan Miller's banner got raised to the rafters last year, that was a great game where they beat the Islanders in overtime. Rasmus Dahlin throwing a lob pass over the top to Dylan Cousins, and he was able to put it in the back of the neck for the win. So they beat this team before, but you got to do it in regulation. So the Oots. Let's look at the out-of-town scoreboard before we get to the Sabres lineup for this one. They are going to need some help. What you are rooting for. Let's start with the Detroit Red Wings, who are imploding and they're fighting each other at practice. They host the Arizona Coyotes. That is going to be a game where the Coyotes have been struggling a lot lately. But the Red Wings have too, so something's got to give. You hope it goes the way of Arizona. They'll be starting their number one goalie, Connor Ingram. The Red Wings are going back to Alex Lyon. The other games to watch for on this night. All right, let's throw out, uh, want to throw Tampa out there? Tampa, seven points above the Sabres, so they could get within five. They host the Rangers at seven o'clock. Vasilevsky against Shesterkin. Big goalie matchup there. If the Rangers win and the Sabres win, then you're five points back of the other wildcard spot, which would be nice to have. Other games that you are rooting for. Uh, you're absolutely rooting against the New Jersey Devils. They are at the Dallas Stars. An 8 o'clock puck drop. Go Dallas. Jake Ottinger starting for the Stars. That's good. And then the late game, 10 o'clock. The Capitals, who lost last night, 7-2 to the Oilers. 
Back-to-back games. This time they're at Seattle. Joey Decord goes for Seattle. Uh, we'll see who goes for the Capitals. That's a 10 o'clock buck drop. So a lot of games that matter to the Sabres that they will need to go their way. All right, the lineup for the Sabres in this game. Not too different from what we have seen uh, in the past couple of affairs. In fact, it's pretty much exactly the same. Uh, so really no changes to talk about. Olsen still down with Jost and Robinson. Uh, that line had a pretty good night the other night, looking into goal. So really no changes to talk about. And finally, our parlay of the day over on our partners at FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, just got to hit on one of these. Let's go. Let's go the easy route again. Over five and a half goals for Sabres and Islanders. I'm going to do that because it's down to five and a half. Most games are six and a half. And I mentioned how the Islanders might be playing a more offensive style than people think. I'm going over five and a half. J.J. Paterka to record two plus shots on goal because he whips it. And then the Islanders plus one and a half. I think the game stays close. Uh, I'm still hoping the Sabres win that one by one. So Islanders just got to lose by one or win the hockey game. So I'm going Islanders plus one and a half. Paterka two plus shots over five and a half goals for a plus 247 over at FanDuel Sportsbook. All right, that's going to do it for us today here on the show. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And if they win, then we will have another playoff-level atmosphere game build-up for Saturday at Detroit. Get us to the Saturday Detroit game, Sabres, but you got to take care of your business at Key Bank Center on Thursday. Thanks, everybody, for listening, making us a part of your day every day, your first listen. Now go make Locked On Sports today your next listen. Check them out on YouTube, first-ever 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and it's now available on Amazon Fire TV as well and the free Fire TV channels app. Talk to you tomorrow here on Locked On Sabres.